Hi, John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and welcome to Master Your Social Media. For the next several minutes, I want to take some time to talk about why you need to consider using social media as an essential element as you're thinking into your overall marketing strategy for your business. After all, what's the goal of marketing? It's to be seen, be recognized, and to attract the type of people you prefer to do business with into your business, whether it's online or it's brick and mortar. Wherever you may work, you want to attract people to your business, and marketing is one of the ways that you do that. Now, as we think into social media, I want to start off this presentation with really some social media 101 starting with the basics. And then from there, as we go through this presentation, I'm going to go a little bit deeper to really discuss how you as a business owner or an entrepreneur can create an effective social media marketing campaign and then replicate that again and again and again to really do two things. Number one, to get yourself noticed. One of the main purposes of marketing is to get recognized so people know who you are. And number two, the secondary reason we look to market is to attract the type of customers who want and need what it is that you have to offer. So as I shared in the chat before we got started, I hope you've got a pen and a paper handy to take a few notes, and we're going to jump right into this. Now, for those of you that don't know who I am, let me real quickly introduce myself. My name is John Terry. I'm known as the Black Belt Leader. I'm a two-time martial arts Hall of Fame inductee, and really my superpower is helping individuals become black belt leaders in life. What do I do? I teach and train individuals and organizations to truly become masters of their chosen craft, trade, or profession. Now, interestingly enough, many of the individuals and organizations who want and need what I have to offer as a coach and a trainer are often searching for coaches, trainers, and consultants like me online. So if I'm not where they are and they go looking for a solution, my name, my website, my information doesn't show up. So as I've had to learn to put myself out there so I can be seen and to use social media as one avenue in my marketing to attract the type of customers I can best serve, today I want to talk about how you can do the exact same thing in your business. Now, while social media has been around for a while, maybe you've yet to adopt it. Why? I'm not sure at this point, years ago when social media first hit the mainstream on the internet, many people said, this is just a passing fad or a fancy, and it's going to go away. Well, I'm here to tell you, in case you haven't realized it, social media is here, and it has become one of the most popular ways for individuals to connect, especially during the pandemic, when people were sequestered at home, couldn't work, couldn't get out. Social media literally exploded. And what we've seen from consumers is an adoption of social media as a place to live life, or at least a portion of their life, and we've literally accelerated the adoption and embracing of social media more than 10 years into the future over the last 18 months during this COVID pandemic. Now, if you're not using social media, maybe it's because you don't know how it works. Maybe you've been told it's expensive. Maybe you've been told it doesn't work in your business model. But maybe you're interested in learning about social media, but you're one of those folks that just procrastinate until you get it all figured out, or you simply don't know what you're doing. Or to be honest, maybe you're one of those individuals who's simply lazy and doesn't want to learn something new. Well, whatever your reason, today what I want to do is I want to dispel some of the common myths that are associated with social media. And I want to take a few minutes to share some ideas that you can use to promote and grow your business using social media as a means to do what? Gain more visibility, get noticed, and drive more traffic, i.e. customers, to your business. Now, one of the things I'm often asked when I'm doing coaching or training with a business owner or an entrepreneur is, what platform should I use, John? Well, there, there's a short answer to that. It depends. Now, what does it depend on? Let me share it this way. There's a lot of social media platforms that you can choose from. Some you've heard of and others you haven't. Every time I turn around, there's another social media platform popping up somewhere. Everybody has realized social media is here to stay. So deciding which platform you want to use or if social media even works for you is an important decision and it's one you shouldn't take lightly. 
Now, while there are, there are literally scores of social media platforms out there today, I want to focus primarily on the big five in this time that we're going to be together and where it may make sense to use those in your business. I'll comment a little bit on some of the other rapidly growing social media platforms, but today I want to focus on really the big kahunas in the room. First off, I want to talk about Instagram. Now, understanding Instagram is this. Instagram is a social networking, predominantly mobile app, something you use on your smartphone to do what? Post and share videos. It's an opportunity to become a visual storyteller about your business. Facebook, we're going to touch on as well. It's a social networking site where you can also post photos, but you can add comments, videos, you can chat, you can share links, and you can really create community inside of Facebook. We're going to take a minute to talk about Twitter, which is one of the smaller social media platforms, but it allows you to share news, interest, and photos in very short messages referred to as tweets. It's a great way to communicate to your audience, especially if you're a fitness uh, gym owner, you're a martial arts studio, or you've got a program where people are interacting with you on a daily or weekly basis to share updates of schedules and to do a lot of communication through Twitter that allow you to not have to take in 20 calls a day. Are we having class tonight? Are we having this event over the weekend? For those that are event driven, it's a great tool for that. We're going to touch a little bit on LinkedIn and how you use that to connect with other professionals and really use that to introduce your business, but also build center of influence referrals. And we're going to talk about YouTube, which is a video sharing website and essentially an opportunity to have your own private television network. So as we go through and we talk about these unique social media platforms, this is where we're going to spend our time today. These are the logos and the emblems that you're going to see on other social media sites as they relate to these specific social media platforms we're going to look at. So let's jump into Instagram. Now, Instagram, as I shared, is a mobile application. And what does it allow you to do? To take, to edit, and share photos and videos with those that are following your Instagram page. So think of it this way. Think of Instagram as an online photo album that you can either share privately or you can share publicly with other subscribers and use that as a means to self-promote your brand and your business. Now, if you're an existing business or you're looking to launch a business, as you're getting set up on Instagram, instagram.com to get set up, you're going to want to opt in to do an Instagram business account over a personal account. Now, why would you want to do that? Because you get the same sharing capabilities as a business user as you do as a personal user. But with a business account, you get a back-end view of what you're posting. So you have an opportunity to see the insights of how well your photos and videos are performing, as well as the ability as you're posting those videos and those photos to be able to post your business address and your phone number so that individuals can seek you out. And if you are a retail customer facing business, they actually know where to go find you to connect with you. Now, Instagram is a great platform for a business where virtual storytelling can be very helpful to promote your brand. So think about a martial arts studio that's teaching young children how to live disciplined lives, how to compete at a very high level, teaching teen and adult women how to defend themselves, a fitness center that's helping individuals get into the best shape of their life, a financial professional that's helping people create a financially secure retirement, a restaurant, a designer, an architect, a retailer, any business that can use photos to show before and after, to show the progress along the way, or use photos and videos to tell a story of who you are and what you do, Instagram can agree incredibly powerful. Now, Instagram is a great platform where you're going to have an opportunity to serve your customers at the highest level. And if you want to find a way to get started working with Instagram, business.instagram.com backslash getting hyphen started. Business.instagram.com backslash getting hyphen started is a great place to I understand how to create and set up a business account and utilize that in your business.
Now, when you're thinking about utilizing Instagram, no matter what you're selling, it's essential that whatever you're going to post on your Instagram account tells a story about who you are, what you do, and what your unique offer is to the customers you're trying to attract. You don't want to just present your product or service like you would see in a commercial. You want the images that you're going to put out there to visually communicate how your offer, whatever it is that you do, whether it's getting somebody in shape, teaching them to defend themselves, helping them achieve a secure retirement, helping their children save for college to buy their first home of their dreams, to be able to draft the plans that ultimately become the home they've always wanted to build. Whatever it is, you've got to build a story around that. So let me give you an example. If you're a martial arts studio that teaches self-defense, maybe you put a picture of a girl that's elbowing an attacker that's jumped out uh, in a parking lot and has attempted to drag her away from her car. Maybe you're a retailer that's selling swimwear. So maybe it's a picture of someone in a beautiful jungle setting in the Caribbean jumping off of a cliff into a lagoon and they're wearing your swimsuit. Or maybe you're that financial advisor that works with people to help them achieve a secure retirement. Maybe it's a picture of a retired couple sitting in first class in an airplane or enjoying life at a five-star resort. What am I really saying? If you're using Instagram, your goal is to create an experience around the pictures and images that you're posting that are going to reveal the desired outcome. You're showing your prospective customers and clients how their dreams can become reality by working with you. Now, let's shift over and take a look at Facebook, one of the 800-pound gorillas in the social media space. Over 2.9 billion followers worldwide. Facebook is what I like to refer to as a mega player in the social media marketing world, and there's a good reason for that. When we think about Facebook, many of us think of that as a platform for personal use and an opportunity to engage with friends and family, as many of us did during the pandemic. But many business owners have failed to realize that Facebook can be an ideal platform to promote your existing business. Or if you're getting ready to start a new business or start a new endeavor in your business, It's a great way to get your brand and your message out to a very wide audience, but it's also an opportunity to create engagement so your existing customers can follow you, and as you serve them by engaging with them on Facebook, you turn them from customers into raving fans. Now, you can also use Facebook to post business updates and business relative content at your discretion, but really, Facebook is there to build community. So again, if you're going to look at Facebook as a business owner, you want to opt in for a business account over just having a personal account. And you want to make sure whatever you're posting personally goes on your personal page and what you're posting business related goes to your business page and you're inviting your friends, your family, your neighbors, your existing customers and prospective customers to follow your business page so they get a chance to interact with you. One of the advantage of a Facebook business page is the fact that you get to include links to your website. You get to have multiple administrators so other individuals in your organization besides you can help not only with posting content, but managing the interaction when people are responding to what you're posting. Now you've got an opportunity to utilize Facebook in a unique and different way. So how do you use Facebook? Well, if you've got a Facebook business account, let me say this, Facebook can be a very powerful tool to attract new customers into your business, but it's also an amazing tool that's often overlooked in the fact that it allows you to stay connected with your existing customers and clients. The goal in any successful business is to get a prospective customer to buy from you once. And then your secondary goal is to keep them engaged so they're buying from you again and again and again. Now, if you're a 
fitness center owner, you're a martial arts studio, you want that retention of that month to month payment of tuition as they continue to seek that desired outcome of learning to get in shape, learning to defend themselves, whatever that may be. If you're a retail salesperson that sells clothing or food or whatever it is that is your offer to the world, you want people to not come and enjoy your opportunity to see success in some way or to achieve a goal or an outcome. You want them to come back again and again and again. But remember this, if your clients and prospective clients are on Facebook and you're not there, you are the invisible man or the invisible woman. And you can't attract the people who don't even know that you exist. But even if you're there and you've got a business page, if you're not actively posting content and you're not actively engaging with your followers, at some point, they're going to leave you because people desire engagement. So see Facebook as a tool to build relationship so that you can keep those people believing in you. And through engagement, you turn them into an unpaid sales force that starts sharing what you're posting with other individuals in their network. And all of a sudden, they become a referral partner for you. So if you're thinking of Facebook, I want to challenge you to think community. It's there that you want your customers engaging with you and you're living life with them online. Now, Facebook is also a great place as prospective customers respond to ads or they respond to shares of your existing customers that love who you are, what you do. It's a chance for you to engage with them, welcome them to your page, interact with them, ask them questions, and let them see the value of what you have to offer, but let them know that they are valued as a prospective customer. So what does that mean? It means you need to spend 30 to 45 minutes a day in your social media platforms or train a member of your team to do that. So you are showing up actively posting content, but also engaging with the people that are engaging with you. As you're putting up images, videos, articles, quizzes, whatever it is that you're doing, there's a number of ways that you can use Facebook to invite your clients to do something else. If you are a financial professional and you're getting ready to hold a webinar or a seminar, you can post that on Facebook and encourage your existing customers to share that invitation with their network to attract people that don't yet know you. The same works if you're a martial arts school owner, a fitness center owner, a restaurant that wants to get message out of a event that you're doing over the weekend where maybe you're going to do a fitness challenge three days to a healthier you or you've got a special guest instructor coming in that's going to teach self-defense or firearm safety, or you've launched a new recipe in your restaurant and you want to get the word out, Facebook is a way that you can grab people's attention and get them to help share the message for you and an opportunity to expand your engagement. But here's something important I want to spend just a minute on. Don't forget that anytime a client, a customer, or a prospect post something on your Facebook page. They give you a thumbs up. They give you a heart. They give you a smiley, some emoji. That's a lead for your business. And while you may not have time to reply to every comment and everybody that gives you a thumbs up or a heart, when you see people engaging, and especially those that are doing more than just the thumbs up and the heart, and they're actually typing something on your page in response to something you've posted, those are people that have an interest in that particular message. Now you've got a chance to engage with them, find out what about that content attracted them and why they posted. What are you doing? You are building relationship. You're creating some loyalty in the fact that you've engaged with them and you've invited them to come deeper into your world. Now, here's enough, something else that many people don't realize about Facebook. You can also create private Facebook pages where you can invite your existing customers to have an exclusive place that they can hang out with you and get more time with you that those on your public facing page don't. Now, people want to belong. And when they have an opportunity to be plugged into something that is considered exclusive and that they're getting things nobody else is getting on your public page, there you're building a sense of community that you're truly adding value to your existing customers in a special way.
I was talking to a martial arts school owner the other day that he has a private Facebook page that he uses with his students. And in that, he goes into in that private group, adding to what he taught in the previous lessons that week and sharing some insights that he didn't have time to share in the 45 minutes of instruction that he has in each of the classes that they come together. I thought it was a brilliant way to add value and give their students more. I have a good friend that's a financial professional. He has a private Facebook page. What does he do? He uses that page to constantly be educating his existing clients on financial topics, on financial tools, on financial resources, sharing insights from studies that have been done and how that applies to those individuals. And as a result of that, he's making his clients and customers aware of financial concerns they didn't even know they should have. And it's an opportunity for him to reach back out and reconnect with them. But one of the neat things about a private Facebook page is you really get that chance to build community. I've seen a number of people using private Facebook pages where they talk about their children. They talk about their family vacation. They get people in that private group to share what they're doing in their lives. I remember one individual was sharing a story of his kids going off to college. And as he shared that through his private Facebook page, his customers would periodically hit his private group and say, hey, how are John and Jesse doing in their particular uh, schools that they're enrolled in? How are their grades? Are they doing okay?" And those individuals began to see those children of that financial advisor as extended members of their own family. And when you can build that sense of family in a group, you've truly connected. So remember this, membership has its privileges and a private Facebook group can be a powerful way to build something that's powerful and that connects people and keeps them connected with you. Now, one of the ways you can expand your reach with Facebook is using a Facebook ad. It's an opportunity to promote your website to create an ad about a product or a service, to invite people to subscribe to your newsletter or your blog, or to invite them to an event that you're hosting. The goal of a Facebook ad is what? To boost your page's visibility and to attract more people to engage with you. Now, you can use Facebook ads to reach a broad audience, but you can also use the filters available in your Facebook audience ad building page to really refine who sees your message. You can refine by age group, by hobbies, by interest, or other unique demographics. I know running the United States Martial Arts Hall of Fame, we use Facebook ads to promote our national training camp, our Hall of Fame event, and some of the other unique things that we do. And we specifically define by age group and people that have an interest in the martial arts. As a result, I'm getting those ads in front of people who have a passion for that particular venue. Now, if you're hosting an online event, like a webinar, a seminar, a conference, or a class, you can also set up a Facebook event page where you're sharing the details of your event, and you're providing a place for people to register, and if it's a paid event, they can even buy a ticket there. Many of you came to this event through an event page that I posted on Facebook and also one on LinkedIn. You can then, after building the event page, use a Facebook ad to boost that event's visibility to people who have a similar interest in what it is that you're going to be sharing. Now, let's shift our attention to Twitter. Now, Twitter is a, is a smaller social media platform, but it's one where you can do some very unique things to stay connected with your audience in very short bites that I refer to and the industry refer to as tweets. Twitter can be used to share news. It can be used to share interests. It can be used to share photos in very short, pithy messages. Now, what's the difference between Twitter and let's say Facebook or Instagram? A tweet is a way to do this, to deliver a pithy thought, an insight, an idea, or a curiosity statement about your business in a very succinct way. You're limited to 280 characters, so you've really got to refine what it is you want to say so that it makes an impact. You can drone on forever on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and some of the other platforms, but in Twitter, you've got to be very, very concise. So how do you use Twitter in your business? Well, Twitter has only 330 million followers. I say only 330 million, but that's compared to 2.9 billion that are on Facebook. Facebook. 
But 330 million is still a lot of people. And it's a great way to attract people to your business and start a conversation that can highlight your brand, promote your products, your services, or whether it is that you have to offer. It allows you to share your thoughts and opinions of what's going on in the world around you, as well as offer education and insights that share your knowledge and experience and wisdom with the world. It gives you an opportunity to show up as an authority figure, as an expert, but also as a way, if you're asking questions, to engage people in conversation, to drive them to the point of engaging with you even more. So if you're going to be using Twitter, let me give you some suggestions on how to use Twitter to get a more positive impact. If you're going to use Twitter, tweet one to five times a day. And if you're going to be tweeting no more than one to five times a day, keep those tweets, those little messages, very short, very sweet. Make sure that whatever you're posting is going to be important content that people are going to get that's going to highlight you in a positive way and let them know that you're an authority figure or an expert and that you are a subject matter expert they want to look to in a particular area. Use hashtags, and we'll talk about what those are in a moment. Ask questions. Twitter is a great place to ask questions to get people replying and then engage in conversation with them and then drive them to your Facebook page, drive them to your LinkedIn page, drive them to your website and other opportunities to share. And just like you can with Instagram and Facebook, you can share photos and videos when applicable and that help you reinforce your message. One of the ways I often use Twitter is I'll share a comment and then I'll record a piece of video that I'll put on YouTube and I'll share the YouTube link in Twitter. And all of a sudden there's my comment and there's the video below where I can go beyond the 280 characters of Twitter to really go in more depth into the point that I'm trying to make in that very short pithy comment. Now, Twitter does have an ad marketing program, but theirs is uniquely different. Unlike Facebook, where you're going to pay for a specific amount of money and they're going to push things out and you know exactly what you're going to get, the price for doing ads on Twitter is going to vary based upon the audience size, who else is wanting to advertise to that group, how engaging the ad is, and the time at which you're going to be marketing. They use what's called billable actions. And so you're actually bidding for available space in Twitter. So you have to make the decision whether or not Twitter ad marketing will work for you. Personally, I've not found it effective, but I know other individuals that I work with that have effectively used Twitter advertising to get in front of their ideal customer because that's where they hang out. Now I want to shift the conversation to LinkedIn for a minute because if we think of LinkedIn, many people see that as a business community page that was initially used to post online resumes for people seeking employment or for businesses looking to hire someone. But LinkedIn today has truly morphed into a business to business platform that is a phenomenal place to connect with individuals who have a business that attracts the same type of customers that you do. And it's a unique place to connect with them. It allows you to showcase what you do to other business professionals and figure out opportunities to collaborate and joint venture with them. So think about LinkedIn this way. You can use this as a tool to find and connect with other professionals that do what you do. Other financial professionals, other martial arts professionals, other fitness professionals, other people that are architects or engineers or restaurant owners, whatever it may be, you can find those people there. But those people also have interest that they share. And you can oftentimes find business owners, as I have, that have a specific passion for the martial arts. And while they may run different businesses, we share and interact because we all have a love for the martial arts. Now, on LinkedIn, you can post blog articles, you can post newsletters, you can post specific information about your organization, things you're involved in, you can promote your employees, you can share years and reviews, you can use that as a business to business tool. But where I love LinkedIn is in the area of networking. It gives you an opportunity to find like-minded people who also want to grow their business that are willing to come alongside you and work with you to help each business grow their influence, 
and their reach. So think about LinkedIn as BNI, Business Networking Institute, but it's online. Here you can have an opportunity to connect with a dentist, with a chiropractor, with a banker, with other people whose customers meet the same profile as the type of people that engage with your business. And if you can make an introduction to someone that doesn't use that bank, but could utilize their services, you engage in the law of reciprocity. And those individuals are going to reciprocate back to you by making referrals to people that want to eat at your restaurant, to enroll in your fitness center, to sign up for your martial arts program, to have you build and design the blueprint so they can build the home of their dreams. Whatever it may be, LinkedIn can actually get you there. Now, you may be saying at this point, but John, my business is not B2B. It's not business to business. It's business to consumer. So why would I want to use LinkedIn? Remember this, people who are in business also have a life outside of their business. And the vast majority of them have a family who also has a life outside of that business. And if business owners are successful in their business, which many of them are, guess what? They have more discretionary money to spend than those people that aren't successful. And if your business requires people to spend money to purchase your goods, your products, your services, the more money people have, the more of your stuff they can purchase if it helps them accomplish a goal or an objective or reach a desired outcome. So LinkedIn can be a very powerful tool for you to use to educate other business owners of who you are, what you do, and how you uniquely do it. LinkedIn is an amazing tool to position yourself as an authority figure and an expert in your chosen craft, trade, or profession. Now, there's another reason that you want to have a Facebook business page and a LinkedIn business page, and that's this. When someone's looking for a business like yours, where are they going to go? Oftentimes, the first place they go is to Google or one of the other search engines to look for someone that does what you do. If you have a Facebook business page and you've got traffic going to that, you've got a LinkedIn profile, you've got traffic going to that. When someone begins to search for who you are, what you do, guess what? Your links are going to show up and more of your links are going to show up in that Google search, giving you an opportunity to be introduced to that individual and their family members that they may be searching for a solution for. So if you're old enough to remember the phone book, Think of LinkedIn as a phone book, but an opportunity to tell so much more. Rather than just having your business name and a phone number and an address, your LinkedIn profile, your Facebook profile gives you an opportunity to let people know, this is who I am, this is what I do, this is how I uniquely do it, and here is the benefits of working with me to accomplish a goal, a dream, or an objective. So what do you do with LinkedIn? LinkedIn is a powerful tool for connection. It is a powerful tool for finding other business professionals who have the similar clients that you want to attract, partnering with them and working out opportunities to share clients and resources, to share posts on each other's page, and really to help brand and grow each other's business. It's also an opportunity for you as people are searching to be found because those business profiles as people engage, move up the search engine opportunities to be found. And now more people are going to know who you are and what you do. So let's jump over to YouTube for just a minute. When we're talking about YouTube, what is it? It's a video sharing platform that's going to allow you to visually share your business your products, your services, and how it serves that audience in some way. Think of it as your own private TV channel. It's a great place to showcase the outcome that your clients and customers enjoy for working with you. It's a great place to curate content that attracts people to engage with you. And it's an opportunity to keep your existing customers engaged through impactful, entertaining, educational, and informational videos that can be repackaged and shared across all of the other social media platforms. So YouTube is an amazing way to showcase your brand in action. 
Think of you as a fitness gym owner and you've got a YouTube video of an individual exercising and working out in your rumba class, your Zumba class, whatever it is that you are doing in the fitness world. You're a martial arts school owner and you're teaching young children life skills. And you're able to share that with other parents who have young children, four or five and six years of age. Now, all of a sudden, that carefully curated brand content can be used to introduce who you are and what you do to an audience that you want to serve at a higher level. You can use those interactive videos to start a conversation around a financial planning topic, around food, and a unique thing that you do in your restaurant that nobody else does. You can create interactivity by having Q&A as a part of those videos. You can use polls and other things to get people to interact, and the goal there is to get people following and engaging your content on a consistent and regular basis. Now, videos are a great way, and we talked about Instagram earlier, YouTube is a powerful way to take the videos you're producing to tell a story. Remember, our brains are hardwired for stories. So as you're doing video, don't just do a video that you throw up what your product or service does or your experience or your background. Put yourself in the shoes of your prospective customer what they want or need, or what they get as a result of engaging and working with you and accessing what it is that you offer and make that the focus of your video. Now you're speaking directly to the audience in a way that's going to attract the type of customer that you want to get more of in your business. You have an opportunity to utilize that in such a way that you can literally tell a story that engages people on an emotional level where they make that very initial decision to say yes or no to your offer and give them an opportunity to feel like they know you, they like you, and they trust you at some level because people prefer to buy from people they know, like, and trust. And when you're showing up as your authentic you over and over again, people get to know you and like you. You know, if you think about television and maybe you watch the news and there's specific broadcasters that you've watched for a number of years. You feel like after a period of time, you get to know that individual and somebody will mention their name and you're like, oh yeah, I know them. Well, you really don't, but you become so familiar with them because they've been their genuine, authentic self over and over, day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. They've literally become an extended part of your family and your inner network of people. You can accomplish the very same thing by using YouTube. Now, like any other social media platform, if you're going to be successful with YouTube, it's all about ongoing engagement. You can't do one video and never post anything else and wonder why it didn't work. You've got to be active and constantly posting content, whether it's a post, a video, an image, something that's engaging your audience. So when you're thinking YouTube, what are we doing? We're using video to get an audience to engage with us, to follow us, and to continue to live life with us as you're being your authentic self in front of them. So let me share a couple of tips for successful use of YouTube. Number one, keep the content coming. If you're going to post one day a week, post one day a week. If you're going to post three days a week, post three days a week. If you're going to do a live event that you're just going to go on YouTube live and just share from your heart, do that over and over again. Consistency is necessary, and you want to make sure that what you're sharing is going to be relevant to your audience. Now, you want to be interactive, so you want to create an opportunity to ask questions that people can respond to. You want to make sure that you're opening up your video so people can make comments and you can reply to those comments because people that comments become leads to your business. And if they're already a customer, it's a chance to deepen that relationship and keep them following you even more. Another way you can use YouTube number three is customer testimonials. Having those that are already working with you and experiencing their desired outcome can be incredible. You're a fitness center owner. You have someone on in a video you're interviewing that says, I lost 35 pounds and five inches in my waist working with Mary in this fitness center. 
you're working with Brad as a martial arts school owner, and you've got a parent, a couple of parents that come in and say, my kids were bouncing off the walls. They were the ADHD poster children, but having enrolled them in Brad's martial arts school, they've learned discipline. They've learned some structure. They're doing better in school. They're more respectful at home. And not only that, they're learning life skills that are going to allow them not to fear the bully as they get a little older and those things happen in the schools. Those can be powerful testimonials that can attract more of the type of customer that you want to attract. And you want to make sure, number four, that you customize your YouTube channel to your audience, making sure that you're adding images and other things that you can do on your YouTube channel that you make it unique to you. Again, think television. How do you want your television channel to show up when people see it? Now, in addition to the five major media outlets that we've covered up to this point, there's a number of other social media platforms out there. I want to touch on just a few of those just to mention their names. Vimeo, similar to YouTube, another place to do video marketing. You've got Gab, another social media platform similar to Facebook. You've got Pinterest, an opportunity. If you engage with women in particular, you want to be on Pinterest because this is a place a lot of women tend to hang out. TikTok has literally exploded. And if you're looking to engage, especially a younger audience, you want to uncover and unpack more about how to work in TikTok. Now, there's also Snapchat. There's Parler. There's audio platforms such as Spotify, there's Anchor, there's Facebook Messenger, there's WhatsApp. I could go on and on and on as I'm trying to think of all the different platforms that we could mention. But the big question you say is, John, there's scores of platforms out there. You've given me five and now you've given me another eight and you're still talking about other platforms with no image. Do I need to be on all of them? Short answer, it depends. If your audience is there, the people that you want to attract, then you've got to make the decision, do you want to be there or do you want to be invisible? Now, you don't have to be on all of them, but you want to be strategic about which ones you choose based upon which ones of those are going to serve your audience. So now that you've got a better understanding of social media, let's talk about engagement for just a moment. When should you post? What should you post? And how often should you actually show up? Well, you can post once a day, twice or three times a week. The key in how you're going to show up is consistency. So my challenge to you is as you're looking to engage in social media, create a schedule that you're going to put on a calendar with reminders and you want to stick to that posting schedule. Whatever it is, once a week, twice a week, three times a week, five days a week, every single day, there's no right or wrong. You just want to be consistent. The goal is to show up and to be seen. But if you're going to show up and be seen, you want to make sure you're posting relevant content that's going to be engaging and that's going to promote your brand in a positive light. Now, you want to avoid making the temptation to sell every time you make a post. If you sell every time you try to make a post, you're going to tune your audience out because nobody wants to be sold. People want to build relationship. And when you think about social media, what's the very first word? Social. We're building social impact by engaging with people and getting to know them and letting them get to know us by building relationship. So as you're posting, make sure they are number one, relevant. And number two, they're going to add value to your customer in some way. You also want to make sure that every day your content is branded as you're posting so they know where the content came from and there's consistency in how you're putting it out there. Remember this, you're there to do what? Promote your brand. You're there to do what? Engage with clients and customers you already have and attract prospective customers just like them. Now, social media has really gotten crazy over the last several weeks and months. And we've seen a lot of division and there's a lot of divisive things going on in the social media world. I want to challenge you to avoid the temptation to jump into the controversy that continues to perpetuate itself online. Because if you do that, what happens? You can end up alienating half of your potential audience 
by choosing to dive into and comment on a controversial topic that's politically charged or racially charged, unless that's part of your brand and you're prepared for the ramifications of that. Also remember, as you're posting, whatever you post goes global. So you don't want to post personal information that you don't want in the public domain. Now, let me share a couple of ways that I post. On Mondays, I post a Black Belt Leadership Master Your Life moment. I literally pre-record a video on my computer using Zoom. I then take that content and I load it directly to several media platforms, Facebook, LinkedIn, and a few others where I can drop the video directly there. I also load it on YouTube and I will share that YouTube link in other media platforms so that message goes out. Little side note, Facebook, LinkedIn, some of the other big platforms, if you're sharing a YouTube video on those platforms, Facebook and LinkedIn are not going to organically promote those as much as a video that is directly loaded onto their platform because you're driving prospective customers of theirs, even though they're prospective customers of yours too, you're driving them off of Facebook or LinkedIn to a third party platform that they don't own or control. So where you can post the video directly on that social media platform and where you can't you want to use a YouTube link. As an example, Instagram only allows one minute videos. If I'm doing a three minute black belt leadership master your life moment, I can't load that directly on Instagram, but I can load the YouTube link and it shows up automatically. Little work on that and you'll learn the do's and don'ts. Not that difficult, but this is what I do on Mondays. On Tuesdays, what do I do? I post an inspirational meme, but note the branding. I'm going to give an inspirational statement that speaks to my audience, but there's my logo and there's a link to my website. Then on Wednesday, I post another Black Belt Leadership Master Your Life moment where people have an opportunity to hear directly from me as I'm sharing and living life with them. On Thursday, what do I do? I'm going to post an article, I'm going to post a blog, I'm going to post my newsletter, I'm going to post something that is going to engage my audience in a different way. Not everybody's a visual learner, some people love to read, so posting articles, newsletters, and other content such as this are going to give you an opportunity to connect with those people. Now, once you set your social media accounts up, you want to make it easy for people to find them. So when they go to your website, they go to your brick and mortar location, you want to make sure that you've got images there that says, hey, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, we're on whatever social media platforms you're on. And if it's on your website, create a link so someone can click on that image and be taken directly to that site. And you want to encourage your people to follow. If you're using emails that you're sending out to your clients, you want in the signature part to include an image with a link that they can be driven to that. And periodically, you want to invite your audience in a specific email. Hey, if you're not following me on Facebook, you're not following me on Twitter, you've not gone in and subscribed to my YouTube channel, you want to make sure you're constantly asking your audience to engage with you there. Anytime you launch a new platform, it's an opportunity to have an announcement. Hey, we're going live on Twitter for the very first time. I'm going to be doing a Facebook Live this Thursday at 10 o'clock. Join me. Creating an opportunity for people to engage with you gives them an opportunity to do just that. Now, think of other places you could also promote your social media platform. Maybe on the side of a bus. Maybe on the lid of a toilet seat. Maybe on the bottom of a cup. Maybe you have an opportunity to go into a restaurant and you can put something over the urinal in the men's bathroom. If you sell equipment that attracts men that are going to be using the urinal in the restaurant, a variety of different places. I know every time when I travel, I stop at a Love's or I stop at another uh, you know, convenience store along the way and I walk in, there's advertisements of goods and services and the little QR codes that allow people to connect with them. I've used that several times to check out interesting information and become a follower of those resources. So don't be afraid to be creative when it comes to thinking out how you're going to promote your brand. Now, remember this, I talked to you about earlier about Facebook and LinkedIn wanting to promote their own content. 
Let me share one other promotion tip with you that I think you'll find valuable as we get ready to bring this presentation to an end in just a few moments. Google owns YouTube. Google is the number one search engine in the world. Guess which search engine is number two? YouTube. Now, Google and YouTube love cross-promoting because they're on the same team. You put a video on YouTube and then you go promote it with a Google ad, they're going to organically add to that because it drives traffic to them that they can then use for other purposes. But as I shared earlier, if you post a YouTube video on Facebook or LinkedIn, you're not inspiring them to organically promote you because you're sending them to a competitor site. So again, a reminder, whenever possible, post your content directly to the social media platform you're posting on. Now, Twitter and Instagram do have limitations on the length of video, so you may have to share a YouTube or a Vimeo link if you're doing a video that exceeds the limits of what you can post, but when possible, go direct to the source and post there. And it's okay to post it multiple places, giving people more opportunities to find it. Now, one last advanced tip on promotion. The more engagement that you get on people, not just liking your post, but making a comment on your post, the more those social media platforms are going to organically promote it for you. So as an example, I have a friend, again, he's a martial arts school owner uh, in Florida. And one of the things that he does is as he's posting content, he'll share in his classes on Tuesday and Thursday night, hey, we just posted a new video on YouTube. Go check it out. Hey, we just put a new post on Facebook. Hey, we just put a new post here. Do me a favor, go visit it and comment. What happens when you comment the algorithms that monitor how active those posts are pick up on those comments. And as they see comments being added over and over again, it extends the amount of time that particular post stays at the top of the page and stays visible to other people searching you out. As an example, LinkedIn, they scan pages for meaningful content that are five to eight words or more every two hours. Not like, hey, great work, keep it up. Meaningful content that you've taken the time to engage and say something meaningful about the post. Facebook follows a very similar pattern. So if you're encouraging your existing clients and customers to make meaningful comments and to forward and share your post with other people and not just give you the thumbs up, not just give you the heart, this is going to help your content stay visible longer and it's going to allow those social media platforms to help you organically reach a larger audience of people that are interested in that type of content. That's free advertising that those social media platforms are doing for you because they also benefit from having people spend more time on their platforms. So if someone comments that you're following, make a comment, wait a few minutes, and then comment again. And the more this happens, the more your post is going to get promoted. Now, I mentioned hashtags earlier. What's a hashtag? A hashtag is a way to link ideas with certain similar interest that you have or to connect a series of thoughts or to help people more easily find your content. For a business, once somebody sees your ad for the first time or they see a post, they can then use the hashtag to search for similar content that you posted as an opportunity to get to know you. Now, I use in all of my posts, hashtag be a black belt leader. That's going to appear every time I post a black belt leadership message in the marketplace. So anyone searching the hashtag be a black belt leader is going to see all of my content that's available on that particular platform when they search. You want to identify some unique hashtags that are going to tie them to you and uniquely attract them into your content. Now, I was recently in a social media class, and in that class, one of the gurus in social media marketing shared this thought I want to pass on to you. This is what this individual said. She said to use three to four hashtags on each post. Two of those, no more than three of those, should be consistent to your brand. And one or two of those should be specifically rated to the content that you're posting. 
So let me give you an example. I always use be a black belt leader as a hashtag. I also use hashtag master your life. Now, if it's a leadership post, I may post the word leadership or I may post black belt leadership. If it's sales and marketing, it may say master your sales. If I'm talking about social media, it may say hashtag social media. I want to create relevant content. So as people are searching, not just for my specific keywords, but specific areas of interest, I'm going to show up and you can do the same with your content. Now, one last area I want to touch on is email marketing. Many people say, John, I've got a list of my clients and we've got email. That's great. I don't need anything else. Well, I will say this. Email marketing can be an effective way to market, but it does have limitations. And today, those limitations are expanding. The sheer volume of email that's going out today makes it a whole lot easier for your message to get lost in all the noise. And with a number of cyber attacks happening globally, we're seeing a lot of the free email vendors like Gmail, Yahoo, Hotmail, and others that have been around for a while, they are increasing their filtering to combat the growing amount of spam that's in the marketplace and to protect their users from ransomware and other hackers that are out there trying to steal your identity. As a result of that, your email message may be being filtered and not actually getting to the people that are on your list, and you don't even realize it. There's certain keywords that you can have in your emails that may drive them to spam, and you don't realize that's happening. Words like free, words that include money, and other specific keywords that are out there in the marketplace can actually limit your ability to deliver that message to your customers. Now, if you are doing email, you definitely want to make sure you're using an email service so that your emails are can spam compliant. You want to only send email to people that have invited you and given you permission to send email to them. And you want to give them a means to opt out if they don't want to receive your content. There's a variety of platforms out there. MailChimp, Send in Blue, Constant Contact, ConvertKit, a Weber. There's a ton of those out there, and I'm happy to share those resources with you if you want to reach out to me and talk through which of those may work for you. But email marketing can be a great way to market, but it shouldn't be the only way that you're reaching out. Social media, I like personally because it's brand focused. It allows me to reach an audience not just here in Arkansas where I live, but nationally and internationally with what I do. Social media gets to places around the world if you serve a global audience that traditional email may not. And due to the fact that it's constantly growing, it's constantly expanding, I can reach a broader audience. Now, we do want to make sure that as you're marketing, understand that you want to market where your audience is. Email can be great to communicate with your existing clients, but it needs to be more than just that. Only 10% of email delivered is actually open and read, according to a study I recently saw. Now, if you are a friend and you are a close a confidant of theirs in a business or a personal relationship, that number jumps to somewhere between 20 to 30%. But think about that. Even if 30% of your emails getting opened and read, that means over two thirds of the people that are already engaging with you aren't getting those messages that you're trying to deliver. So social media is nice because it gives you another way to share the same message, but to do it in a way that more people are going to see it. So I see social media as a way to augment what you're doing with your traditional media marketing, whether it's print, whether it's radio, whether it's television, whether it's traditional email. It gives you a chance to connect in a new and different way. Now, to me, the best marketing plan is one that you're going to use that's coordinated across multiple marketing platforms. If you're only going to Facebook and that's the only place you go, if the people that want to need what you have to offer aren't looking at Facebook that day, they're not going to see your message. But if you're on Facebook and LinkedIn and YouTube and Parler and Gab and USA Live and Pinterest and you're on all of the other channels, you're showing up on TikTok, all of a sudden, there are more places for people to see who you are, 
what you do and how you uniquely do it. And if the people you're trying to target are there and you're not, you're not going to have an opportunity to introduce them to the magic and the incredible results they could experience as a result of working with you. So social media is important if that's where your target audience spends a portion of their day. Now, you got to remember the average consumer today is spending over two and a half hours on social media day in, day out, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And it's not just, the, as my dad calls them, the teeny boppers. It's older adults and it's retired adults. People during the pandemic gravitated to their smartphone and they never left. They're going there two plus hours a day. And you've got an opportunity to show up where they live. Now, one of the courses I taught, and I'm going to share with you where you can find that, was a course that I taught, Master the Art of Selling. In that particular course, I highlighted how you can use traditional and non-traditional media channels like some we've talked about today, and how you can coordinate those to effectively reach your target audience. You can find that at my website, beablackbeltleader.com, under the training tab. Now, as we wrap up today, I want to share a couple of last minute thoughts, but I want to say thanks for attending. And I trust you found what I've shared a valuable use of your time. But one last thing I want to share before we go. I recently shared in one of my trainings an opportunity to learn how to brand your business for 21st century success. You'll find that complimentary training as part of our monthly Master Your Sales and Marketing series that we offer free of charge on my website, beablackbeltleader.com, again, under the training tab. And if you don't know and you haven't taken the time to identify what customers you serve best out of all the customers you serve, you need to take some time to go through my training, defining your target market, understanding who you serve at the highest level and how to craft specific messages that you're going to put on traditional, non-traditional and social marketing means to reach them and let them know that you have an offer to share with them that is going to help them alleviate a fear, overcome an anxiety, to accomplish a goal, a dream, or objective, or to achieve a desired outcome they've always wanted to achieve. And then, shameless plug, if you haven't yet picked up my number one best-selling book, Black Belt Leadership 101, let me encourage you to do so. Being an expert in your particular field, whatever it may be, means you've got to be a leader. And this book is going to teach you how to lead. My book, Black Belt Leadership, was a number one new release on Amazon. It was the best-selling book in April 2020 on the day it released, and it stayed on the Amazon bestsellers list for over three months. This book and this message resonated and continues to do so. This book is going to introduce you to the 10 essential steps to learning to become a Black Belt leader in life. And if you want to go even deeper, I've taken the content of this book and I've put together a master class, more than 50 hours of video to take you deeper on the journey of what it means to truly become a Black Belt leader in life. And you'll find those and other resources on BeABlackBeltLeader.com. So again, I want to say thank you for joining me. And I want to challenge you to do this. Don't just do social media. Everybody's doing social media. But I want to challenge you to be unique and to be different. And I want to challenge you to take what you've learned today and to master your social media so you show up as the black belt excellent expert that you are in your chosen craft, trade, or profession. I'm John Terry, the Black Belt Leader, and I want to say thank you for joining me. If you haven't connected with me online, let me encourage you to go to BeABlackBeltLeader.com and go to the contact page. There you'll find links to all of my social media. Remember, I practice what I preach, giving you an opportunity to connect with me there on a variety of different social media platforms that I show up on at least two to three times a week, sometimes daily. While you're there, let me encourage you to also subscribe to my free newsletter and have an opportunity to follow me on my Anchor podcast, where every week I'm sharing leadership insights and perspectives to help you grow yourself as a leader. So thanks for joining me and have a great day.